All right, yes, Fit, we are back with yet another episode. This one, as you know, I am a big fan of the mental health and all the mental health series that we've been doing thus far. So I've got lots to talk to you about, very specific to the holiday season. I know that this is the most wonderful time of the year and what could possibly go wrong, especially in 2020. But we've got lots of stress, lots of anxiety, and I wanna help you through all of that during the season. So let's dive right in, shall we? When we think about the holidays, we think about gift giving, we think about gratitude, we think about all of these things, and I want you to think about all those things that can possibly give you that unsettling feeling, right? Maybe family's not traveling this year. Maybe family is traveling that's this year, and that's even more upsetting. You know, wherever you're at and whatever's going on in your life, there's lots of things that can cause some stress and some anxiety. So I'm going to list out what those look like, what we might not even recognize is stressing us out deep down inside, and then I'm going to kind of go back and find some solutions for you for all of those. So diving straight into it, doing too much, right? Being that overachiever of the holiday season. It's it's often a time where we try to do so much all at once. We try to do the the good things, right? For the people around us, the near and dear. We have, you know, activities, some are fun, some are obligations, wherever you may lie with that. Trying to be everywhere at once is just stressful or trying to be nowhere, right? And and being indoors is also just as stressful. And we'll dive into that one a little bit more later, but it can leave you feeling a little bit more frazzled, a little bit unfulfilled with the holiday season. Another one, and this is kind of a big one, is eating, drinking, and or spending too much. So those three things that kind of hit our egos a lot, right? We talk about food. We've talked about already staying healthy with healthy habits in a previous episode. So you can check that out for the holiday season. But also checking here as far as what eating looks like, right? And drinking our consumption of alcohol, sugary drinks, all the pumpkin spice and gingerbread lattes in the world and what that all adds in sugar and and all that stuff that you don't have normally this uh, throughout the rest of the year except for this time of year and then spending too much that kind of goes without saying we want to do the best we can for the ones that we love and that's awesome but sometimes the year's been hard a lot of people have been laid off in 2020 how can you provide those Christmas gifts and how can you provide for those loved ones without breaking the bank and meeting ends meet, right? So that's definitely stressful right now. It's something that kind of no one wants to talk about and we all just want to look at the really pretty commercials that are selling us all these things. But we need to dive into accepting what that feels like and plan a little bit more how to strategize how to fix the too much of eating, drinking, and spending this season. Also, too much togetherness or not enough togetherness, wherever you fall or somewhere probably in the middle, right? Certain certain family might be traveling. Again, you might be all alone. You might be in college or you might be in an apartment working your job and you've been home by yourself for quite some time. And this is usually when you get to fly home to see all the family and that's not happening for you this year or vice versa. You have family that's coming that you didn't expect and so you have to make last minute accommodations wherever you fall on the spectrum. It's stressful to be lonely and to be isolated, especially with everything else going on in your life thus far, right? Um, And also knowing that during this time, you're normally around loved ones, that makes it that much harder because this is a reoccurring thing. Christmas always comes. The holidays are always here. So always being able to come together is kind of that nice way to close a year. And now it's not happening. So what does that look like for us? And then also too much togetherness, now crammed quarters, now being safe, but also trying to up appease everyone and spending time with everyone you want to make sure that you're in the right spot where you're doing what's best for you mentally and you're not being a little bit too spread thin or you know you've got folks who might be a little overbearing than normal it's okay you don't have to admit it I know it's okay but 
what we can do to kind of help set those boundaries for yourself or your mental state to be at its best. Also talking about something that's, I'm going to spend some time here, seasonal affective disorder. So this isn't an actual recognize on its own kind of thing that can be medically diagnosed. However, this is a problem that not enough people pay attention to and they kind of just write it off. It comes with the holiday season and it's usually a, a, a product of fall coming into winter. The days, all of a sudden, daylight savings, it's, I don't know about where you're at, but here in Florida, at 5 o'clock, it looks like a nice balmy afternoon. At 5.15, it looks like it's 10 o'clock at night. There is no in-between. And if you're somewhere in Alaska, you're just living in the night <laughs> and everywhere in between is kind of, you know, falling as it may. So being able to have daylight is great for mood boosting overall. That's why we say, you know, go spend some time in the sun. Vitamin D actually helps improve your mood, things like that. So when that gets taken away from you environmentally, we don't even register that that's a problem problem but it is and it does affect you so that's a huge thing also because it's freezing outside you're spending more time indoors which means you're again not getting that fresh air not getting more activity and again being lonely is also a, a contributing factor this condition is very real even though it's not widely discussed and it it happens again it's just one of those things it's reoccurring so you start to feel some type of way in fall and you start to get maybe a little bit anxious and then by the time winter hits it's full blast and you are just very very uh, very similar to the symptoms of depression and you're very lethargic and moody and upset and you're not very sure why and nothing really happened but you're just very sad and that's a huge thing that you can talk to your doctor to you can doc and see even counseling or or therapy just to have someone to actually talk to you and know what you're going through and understand medically why it's happening and and learn that it's okay to not be okay. I always say that and, and I stand by it regardless. You need to be able to talk about those feelings and, and recognize them as they happen because that's the first step of actually moving past them. So some of those symptoms, again, feeling that whole umbrella of depression symptoms, a loss of interest that of things that you once enjoyed doing, if you started changing it uh, your appetite, maybe you're just not hungry consistently or vice versa. Maybe you're constantly hungry and it's all these foods and cravings that you're never accustomed to and there's no reason or rhyme behind them. Maybe you're not sleeping enough. You're constantly waking up in the middle of the night or you, you just can't fall asleep. Your mind's just constantly running while you're trying to close your eyes and it's the most frustrating feeling or maybe you just kind of turn into that bear in the winter and you just hibernate. You just feel super lethargic. Everything makes you just want to kind of curl up and close off. Those those symptoms are big signs. They're strong signs. Um, fatigue or loss of energy very quickly. If you are moving and you are out and about, maybe you do half the task that you thought you needed to get done that day and you're just like, wow, I can't go anymore because it's draining to be around people, to be moving, to be active, to be, you know, your, bra your brain is going and so you want to think about as much as you can kind of pulling back and closing off again. It, it's a constant reoccurring feeling of wanting to just shut down and shut the door and let like the whole world be on the outside of those doors right so um those those are very serious symptoms those are the very big side effects of it there's those small ones smaller episodes of it but if you are constantly feeling like have any of those symptoms i just described occur to you more than two big long lasting episodes that are a few weeks apart you know where you just can't get out. we all have bad days bad days are different but when you are in that headspace and you can't break free I'm telling you it is okay to go get help please go see someone please go talk to someone talk to me that was my major like I love psychology and I, I would love to help so 
talk to people who want to listen about what you are talking about, about this feeling, about this symptom, and about just not being able to shake it and what can I do and how, because even changing your diet and your food from those previous tips, right, that can help and kind of boost you out of that funk. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but that was just a major one that I kind of wanted to end the whys and how we feel stressed because it can go with something as small as we've got a lot of plans and we don't have a lot of time to we've got seasonal depression and, and what does that look like for us and how can we adjust. So talking about the solutions now, right? Problem solving 101. Here we go. We're going to talk about eating right again. Like I previously mentioned, we have an episode on our podcast that is specifically targeted towards eating right during the holidays. So please, if you want more info after this, pop on over to that one and check it out. So I'll briefly touch on this. During the holidays, we get lots and lots of food options. We get lots of sweets. We get lots of, you know, comfort food, all that good stuff. And it's a great display of all unhealthy calories and empty calories and unhealthy eating. So be smart. Don't eat with emotions. Don't eat with just your eyes, right? Don't eat just because it's social and you're just being nice to your family. Do what's best for you. Eat the right meals for you. Your, Your friends, your family, whoever you're around will understand. And you know, try your very best to meal prep or accommodate that within your schedule while still sticking to your regimen as far as small portion control and frequent eating and making sure that you're still getting the right amount of nutrients that you need for each and every time that you are having a meal. Um, Also, just a fun fact to kind of tie into food and bringing back what we were just talking about, about how food can bring out your mood and stuff. Bananas are a great snack option if you're on the go, if you're traveling, if you're in confined quarters, wherever you're at. Bananas can help boost mood because they are healthy and they're a superfood and they can actually help your hormones. So they have that dopamine which helps boost your mood, boost your energy a little bit. And you know, carbs Yes, carbs are going to be your friend. Things like whole grain products can help increase your serotonin levels, which will, again, help you feel happy. That's kind of why we emotionally eat sometimes. We feel to gra- we kind of g- gravitate towards those carbs because they feel good, right? So making sure that we have those checks and balances and we keep it in moderation. But yes, whole grain is an option to help with those serotonin levels. And last but not least, fish like salmon have that kind of uh, good fat that we like to talk about, those uh, omega-3s that are good for your brain that help brain clarity and functionality. So you can help yourself think a little bit clearer and kind of dig yourself out of any rut that you might be feeling. So check out those foods. If you have any other questions, pop over to that episode. Check out all the other tips. So moving on, we've also got change expectations. This is big, right? Because this can be hard. And for 2020, this is a big one because we're changing the norm, the tradition, like whatever you got going on, we're changing it. So change your expectations of what you want this holiday season to look like, what you want your family time, your meetings to look like. Whatever you set for yourself, tell people. It's totally okay to set that boundary for yourself and tell people, hey, listen, I'm only going to, you know, be here for an hour or I'm only going to do this for so long or whatever it is with justification, with cause, right? Explain, I need time for me. I need to do this or I need to do that. Hey, you know, I got laid off earlier this year. I'm not going to be able to provide gifts for you that you're used to, but I am going to provide something X, Y, Z. Just keeping it always honest will always be your best friend. And setting that expectation is the the easiest way to get that clarification with those around you and yourself. And it relieves that burden of how am I going to pull this off, right? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? You don't have to. You don't have to. 
just set the expectation and make it clear and understand why you're doing it. Awesome. So we're also going to talk about in those expectations, right? We talked about being lonely and too much time together. Thinking about the virtual world we live in, if you've got Zoom or you've got FaceTime, whatever, setting a schedule for those is a great little tip, pro tip there, as far as being able to see your family with not being near them. And also, if you need that time, you start to get a little overwhelmed, an uncomfortable com- conversation arises, that's okay. Hey, friends, I got to go. Click. And that's it. And it's over. And... um. Being able to do that will also help you feel less lonely. It's been proven that these Zoom calls are are really instilling a little bit more of that human connection that we were kind of missing in the beginning of the pandemic before everyone was virtual. So now even your grandmama is up on Zoom. So I know you can make that happen. Don't feel obligated to kind of make your rounds and do these things. Now, if it's in the bottom of your heart, you want to do your thing right but I'm telling you you've got options so make the best one for you deep breathing meditation these tactics we've talked about before you can also check out one of our first podcasts where I mentioned why mental health matters and all the benefits you can kind of do to reset so talking about deep breathing whenever you feel stressed this is like an in the moment solution let's say you didn't know this problem was going to arise and here it is all of a sudden your card got declined or you know now Susie Q invited her relatives to your party and so now it's crazy and you're freaking out because you're freaking out right so deep breathing is a real solution that you can use it's gonna help it's one of the oldest techniques in the book right so thinking about taking anywhere from 10 to 15 even 20 minutes if you need it really wherever you're at and and find that breathing exercise if you have a health monitor kind of smart watch of any type I'm sure you have a breathing app or something that can help you kind of gauge your breath your rhythm of breath if not my cue is to always inhale for three exhale for three and then slowly make it a little bit longer if you can, really filling up and expanding those lungs. You can close your eyes. You can do it while you're walking. That's per- my personal preference. I like a good scenic view. But you do you. you got to figure out what works for you, right? Take a moment. Remove yourself from the situation if you can, right? Whether it's a person talking to you or a, a conversation, maybe you just take a walk away from it. Maybe you go sit somewhere differently, whatever you need. And it's not to offend someone. It's not you're not walking away. You're taking that moment to control everything else up in here so that you can think clearly and come up with a, a, a reason and some logic to then speak rationally right? So that when you respond, it's not out of emotion. It's not out of stress or fear or anxiety. It's, it's out of a conscious sound mind, right? So that'll also strengthen those relationships along the way when wherever you're at and whatever the situation may be. So finding those moments to take a deep breath and then moving into meditation, right? Always a key here. If you can, when you can, Take a moment to find that reset button. Meditation is one of the, I say, easiest, hardest, easiest things to do, right? So it sounds very easy until you have to tell yourself, hey, I have to shut my brain off. And then you're like, oh boy. (laughs) Because if you're like me, it's going everywhere. So finding mindful meditation, again, it starts small. It starts with three minutes. It starts with five minutes. And then you can build up. Just closing your eyes, finding a very quiet place to allow yourself, you know, time. So set up a 10-minute window at minimum. And I know I just said three and five minutes, right? But you're going to need that time to quiet the room. And then you're going to realize that the lights now bother you. So then you have to get up and turn the lights off. And then you're going to come back. And then you're like, wow, now I need water. So give your, I promise, I promise that happens. So give yourself 10 minutes to at least remove yourself from any distractions, find that actual peaceful state, 
and it starts with that slow breathing. It starts with that control, closing your eyes and just being aware of your body, right? Feeling how your hands feel placed against your knees, sitting down crisscross, feeling when you breathe, where your inhale's coming from. Is it coming through your nose? Is it coming through your mouth? Where is that fall in your chest? Those kinds of details are what you're starting to look for and you're starting to just become one cohesive human body spirit all in one, right? It's it's realigning everything that you are and it's refilling that that cup for you. So I can't stress enough how important meditation is as far as finding that reset button to re-energize and repurpose where you're at. Another thing that's a great mood booster and stress relief is exercise. Da 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 da, who knew? So exercise, you've got lots of stuff to choose from, from taking a nice stroll to lifting heavy weights if you've had a really rough day, if something's just really on your mind and it won't quit. Take a little bit heavier, take it gritty, make it raw, make it you, right? And if nothing else, and you just want to get your body up and move in, we've got that 12 days of fitness challenge. I'm repping the cute reward shirt because I can. So check that out. That is now available to you. A yes, you listening to this. Even if you're not a Yes Fit user, you can just make that account and purchase the 12 days of fit challenge so it's two weeks 12 days working hard with yours truly and you get a, that small 20 minute bust your booty kind of workout that makes you feel good and you're doing good for your body and you're not just sitting there eating Santa's cookies right so it keeps it moving and it and it's light and fun and super festive so there's no reason not to especially if you're boarded up indoors it's cold out your regimen's not where it used to be whatever the case may be i have a solution for you right so check that out and last but certainly not least probably my most important tip of all is something that I've personally struggled with in the past too and it's way hard to commit to consistently but you can start today you can start by trying now so difficult times are really hard to find the the positive the silver lining and I'm going to ask you to start finding and practicing gratitude with that. So what that means, it's it's just being thankful for something, even if everything feels like it's not going according to plan. Finding, finding the positive in that and finding the light in that. Why? Because it creates a new le- neurological path in your brain that releases that happiness that releases that joy and it's gonna over time get stronger and build that strength in your connection so that then you don't have to make it a conscious effort it's just the way your brain processes information it's just how you think and man is that a good place to be right so thinking about that will automatically relieve stress and relieve tension without you trying, without you saying, well, if I'm thankful for this, then I get to check this off my anxiety box. That's not how it works. I just want you to take a moment. Maybe it's when you're doing your breaths. Maybe it's when you're doing your meditation. Maybe you've got that junk journal that we've talked about before where you just jot down those right those notes about how the day went. And as you turn the page, you think about something that you're thankful for. Maybe it's the opportunity to have that junk journal. Maybe it's the opportunity to have those expectation conversations where you're like, hey, look, mom, I'm just not coming over for the holidays this year, but I would love to FaceTime you. You know, whatever the case may be, those conversations are hard, but being able to be thankful that you can have them and be thankful of the outcome regardless, being able to Thank yourself for the bravery, right? It's There's so many things just from that one example that you can have that grateful heart and have that grateful attitude towards. We just finished off from Thanksgiving, so there is no reason why you couldn't just keep that momentum going and just find that gratitude in your soul each and every day, whether it's when you first wake up, before the day gets started, or maybe it's at the end of the night when you just reflect at everything, right? And you just want to say something that, to yourself that moment where you're just thankful for what you've got or thankful for where you're at because as you know your life is constantly changing 
everyone else around you is also constantly changing. So finding moments of gratitude will always help you stay grounded and help your soul kind of cleanse itself and just feel a little bit brighter before moving on to the next day because you only get this one day, right? It never comes back. So making the most of those opportunities will give you that happier outlook towards life and will kind of help you navigate through some of those stressful situations a little bit better. So with that, we're going to come to that conclusion, right? There's a lot that can make us stress. There's a lot of things that we can do to make it better, to kind of manage it better. A lot of it's going to come down to having that communication with ourself, being realistic, set those expectations for ourself, make sure that we know what we're doing is best for ourselves, picking the right food, taking out toxic drinks, toxic food, being smart with our money so that we're not messing up our future we're just staying right presently active where we need to be and most of all being thankful and enjoying the ride right we're not going to have the perfect day we're not going to always remember to be thankful and do all the right things and that's okay we have to know how to enjoy the process live in the moment and be able to keep moving forward so with that i leave you Have a wonderful, wonderful time. Check out the 12 Days of Fitness. Enjoy your holiday season, right? Regardless if it's 2020 or not, enjoy the season. Enjoy those moments that do take your breath away. I will see you next time. Stay safe and be strong. 